Okay, first of all, one of the greatest changes is when the characteristics of autism, Asperger's, are confirmed. Now, that can either be an official confirmation of a diagnosis or the person themselves says, yep, that's me. It doesn't have to be the formal diagnosis, just that, okay, I recognize that those qualities and difficulties describe who I am. So the biggest change is a recognition that this is somebody who's different. Um, and the change can be in terms of perception and now realizing, ah, for both parties that I recognize why you may have difficulties with uh, relationships because you had uh, very limited friendships in going through school and friendships are the basis of learning relationship skills, compromise, conflict resolution, emotional needs and so on. So a lot of this in the relationship is very much new territory for you. So those are some of the things that we recognize is First of all, the diagnosis will significantly improve understanding, but it's not an excuse. You can't say, well, because I'm autistic, I can't do it, so I don't need to try. It's very much a question of, yes, you indeed do need to try. The problem is you may not intuitively know what to do, but together, and perhaps with guidance from someone who can support us, we will learn what to do to strengthen the relationship. You know, sometimes I get pushed back um, with clinicians and psychologists here in the States, and so I'm interested since you're in Australia. Um, there are those who either don't think that there are a lot, this is a really big issue of couples of, that are neurodiverse, and some would say marriage issues are marriage issues, problems are problems. You don't need extra training, you know, you just treat the couple as any married couple in relationship. Do you experience that or what would you say to that? Okay, um, Maxine Ashton has published a lot in this and we're currently working on a, a research study where we've created a survey of several hundred couples, one on the spectrum, about conventional relationship counselling. Basically asking, did it work? And 44% said conventional relationship counselling did not have a positive effect. Only 29%, less than one in three, said it did. So this is one of the major things. Conventional relationship counseling is designed for neurotypicals. Tell me about your problems. What are you feeling now? What do you think your partner is feeling about that? And when you have that face-to-face -face conversation disclosure, when one of the partners has an autistic uh, characteristics, isn't going to work. So although, yes, many of the problems exist in the ordinary population, but it's the depth and difficulties associated with modifying that, but also conventional strategies are less likely to work and lead to greater dissatisfaction in the relationship. Some have um, told us even that it even caused harm or made things worse, either not understanding autism and seeing pathologizing it something to the degree or the woman's too emotional and just she's too needy. And so kind of picking up on one dynamic of the relationship but without understanding the communication issues, the area of mind, some of the black and white thinking that goes along, plus just effective deprivation that could be in the relationship. There's a lot more going on than quote, marital problems. And so I still hear a lot of pushback that there's any additional training necessary. Oh yes, there absolutely is. Um, one of the characteristics we pick up with uh, autism is what we call alexithymia. It's a Greek Latin hybrid term, a absence, lexi words, thymia for thoughts and emotions. So when you ask an autistic individual, what are your feelings about this? They'll usually reply, I don't know. Well, okay, okay. Well, what do you think your partner feels about this? Well, I don't know. Come on. You've got to take this seriously. You're being evasive. You are not participating in the counseling and the therapy. But it's actually quite simple. The autistic person has difficulty converting their thoughts and emotions to speech.
And so this needs to be recognized. What we do find, and one of the major things that does help, what can change in a relationship, is developing a communication system. But the communication system may be a little bit different from the conventional look at me and we'll disclose our inner thoughts and feelings. It may be a communication system. For example, if you've got something you want to say, can you find a music track that in the music or the lyrics, it perfectly describes your feelings? Can you choose a passage from a movie that perfectly describes how you think and feel? We tend to think of autism in information technology and accountancy and those sorts of things. It's actually more common in the arts, and it is where artistic people are able to express the self and their world through their art, not their speech and social uh, abilities. So it's looking at alternative communication systems. It's finding some way of communicating. Sometimes it's typing, not talking. Quick illustration, couple. Um, could, uh, should we say, the autistic partner couldn't really explain his inner thoughts and feelings. So I, I said to him, look, okay, you've obviously got a lot of thoughts and feelings in your mind, but it's difficult to convey that in speech. Send your partner an email, type it, don't talk it. And so he did. And when I saw them at the next appointment, they, she said, wow, I learned more about his inner world by reading a two-page email than living with him for 10 years. So I got a follow-up on that. So from a limitations perspective, experiential learning, you mentioned the word intuitive a minute ago. So from, a, let's just take a handful of situations that uh, a facial recognition issue, I, I can't tell what you're thinking based on what your countenance is saying, or perhaps um, it's knowing what to do in the moment from a context perspective. You can learn towards that direction just by trial and error, right? Just this is a machine learning algorithm for, of sorts. But where does that limitation actually end? Do you, is there, is there a potential to really become intuitive in that or is it Kind of like somebody is good at math, just natural, and they're not, or they're not. Okay, I wouldn't use the term intuitive. I would use the term automatic. In other words, this is so practice. It's like learning to drive a car. When you first learn to drive a car, a lot of concentration, and you're focusing on your speed, gears, and a whole range of things. But eventually, it becomes such a well-practiced activity. Psychologically, we call it uh, subcortical. In other words, you can do it without concentrating. And you can then listen to the radio or have a conversation while you're driving. It's not an intuitive process driving, but what will occur over time is it is so practiced, it is automatic rather than necessarily intuitive.